tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Week. It's actually going to be really interesting because I invited my friends who are currently in Spain and um, they are going to share their stories. Um, what's it like being far away from their family and what they're up to, how they're uh, I want to introduce you guys, my friends who are currently in Spain right now. Um, I'd like to call on, so we have Bianca Balantan, we have Nicole Duran, Jigger de Guzman, we also have Bianca Buen Consejo and Paolo Rodriguez. Okay, so there. Yeah, and then Nicole Hi. and Jigger. Hi. Sorry, ang dami ko na tinapin na names. Um, we're waiting on for Nicole de Guzman and J uh, no, sorry, Nicole Duran and Jigger de Guzman. Sorry, got that mixed up. But um, yeah, there's okay. So we have two Biancas here today. <laughs> and then you're both ano pa? <laughs> What's this, Bianca B? You're both Bianca B. Bianca oh yeah, B. yeah, yeah, yeah nga. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um. Yeah, we're, how are we gonna? Uh, I'll say Bianca. Okay, usually I call Bianca, but I say Bianca. Okay, there we go. So there's Nicole and Bianca. Okay, Bia na lang. Okay, that's your new nickname. Okay, so again, Bianca Balandan, um, there's Jigger de Guzman, Nicole Duran, Bianca Bon Consejo, and Paulo Rodriguez. Okay, so these are my friends who are currently in Spain. So where in Spain are you guys? Are you guys in the same area? Or yes, we are. More or less, yeah, we're all in Madrid. Yeah. Okay, Madrid. So how far um, are you guys from each other? Yeah. yeah. Ten minutes yeah. Away. away. Well, I would say about 20 minutes by train from each other, at most. By train? It's not all the center. Like, more like, yeah, probably maybe, I don't know, two kilometers away from each other. Yeah. It's really near. So we're all, we're all in the center of Madrid. And uh, yeah, we've, uh, we're all here and we're all in reach. We can visit each other by uh, we can walk to other houses, or we can take the train. Yeah. And yeah, it's all convenient here. Okay. Okay, so we're here on uh, for the language assistance program. It's mm -hmm. called Auxiliares de Conversacion. So basically, we are the um, we're teaching we're helping the Spanish teachers here teach English to primary and secondary students. So um, if uh, you're in, uh, if you're teaching primary, which I, I'm teaching primary, uh, so, uh, I teach English, science, and art to grades four, five, and six. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's different for the others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how about you, Nicole? Are you um, teaching the same grade or different? Well, I got my... Um, school assignment here and I will be teaching the same grades I guess because I'm still in teaching primary but then last last school year I was actually not in Madrid I was in Valencia so when I was in Valencia I was teaching grades one to six mm -hmm. so yeah more or less the same but then what I heard here in Madrid is that you're gonna be focused on a specific grade right yeah or yeah it depends on the school well okay yeah okay so why did you sorry if I may ask now okay. um why did you want to move from Valencia to Madrid? Well, to be honest, because I wasn't really placed in Valencia City. I was placed in this, um, well, it was also a city, but it was a very small city called Castellón de la Plana. And a lot of my friends were here in Madrid. And every time I would visit, I just loved the city and I, I missed the city. So I decided to move here the next year because there's sometimes there's just nothing to do in Castellón. <laughs> There's really nothing. <laughs> I understand, I understand. So it was more of like the con side, if I'm not mistaken. More or less, yeah. Well, beach side. I mean, there's a beach, but sa <laughs> totoo lang, there's, there's a I couldn't even swim in the beach because it's sobrang lamig. So there's okay. no point. Okay, okay. And, um, okay, so Bia and Paolo, um, what grades do you teach naman? I guess in the high school. Go ahead, please. So I teach high school, so from first year until yung mga magka-college na. And then I teach music, 
English and technology. So it's, I'm not just restricted to English subject. So I also learn about like levers para maturuan ko sila ng, ng lesson in English. So that's what I basically do. But Paolo's like all of us. Yeah, mine, Sobrang iba. mine naman is it's called formation professional. So instead of teaching like uh, primary or secondary students, I teach adults. Who are training to be aircraft and um, automotive mechanic. So I teach like 34 year olds, which is a different challenge because um, it gets them to respect um, the teacher, who is um, visually usually very young yeah. or way younger than they are. And so, they have a very low level of English. Uh, then yeah. hello, hi, kind of level. So that's my language barrier. But I wasn't in Madrid. Like Nicole, at my first year, I wasn't in Madrid. I was in a, I was at the north of Spain. It was very, it was a very small suburb. I won't even say it's a city. It's a suburb, and well, it was lonely. It got really lonely. I'm not gonna lie. And mm-hmm. I'm from Manila. I'm from the city. So then my second year, I decided I'd go to Madrid and I I taught primary last year. But unlike Jigger, I only did English. I was very surprised that you do science, you do math. I don't do math. I mean, I, even with English itself, I struggle. Like. Uh-huh. But, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, yun pala, so you also did the whole language program then before? Yeah. We are all going through this pandemic, um, no matter where we are. The whole world is going through this pandemic. Yeah. I just want to check up on you guys. I mean, you are far away. You have each other, yes, friends. But um, you are far away from your families. A lot of people would want to be with their families now um, during the pandemic. So how are you? How are you guys? How are you guys coping? Mm-hmm. Okay, anyway. So yeah, yeah. we... Uh, well, here in Spain, um, it's not really a strict back home because back home I know that there's a, I think, I, what do you guys in ECQ? And, and MCQ, yeah. But here uh, it's pretty in the new normal stage because every we can, we can travel to different regions, but um, of course you have to wear the mask. Um, Social distancing, uh, there, there is rules still about social distancing here, but um, it's not really being uh, followed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's pretty more relaxed here. And uh, you know, how we're coping up now is uh, we're just living life um, through uh, other means. Like, uh, since we're not teaching now, uh, we're doing so some are doing online classes me I'm doing I, I found like freelance writing gigs back home and then uh, yeah um, we get we still get to go out but yeah we always have to make sure that we're clean and uh, we always uh, have yeah. to stay healthy so yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. were you guys um, kind of scared at first because yeah. was Spain you know, Spain was hit first with the pandemic yeah yeah. So, what? Yeah. I mean, any thoughts on that for you guys? Like, yeah. nervous? A week before work. lockdown, my family was supposed to come here. Oh yeah. Like yeah, like my my parents, my sister, my my grandma, like the whole shabam, my whole family was supposed to come here, and because we because um they wanted to be here before my birthday. Yeah. But, and then, like, I would say, was like, maybe it's gonna be okay. I mean, it's just two weeks. It's just a two week lockdown. Eventually, it will open up. And then, until they couldn't leave Manila, na. Like, and then they wouldn't, and then Spain wouldn't let anyone enter, na. And I was like, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't admit it to myself, na. It's real. Like, I can it's so it's super hard to like think that okay I, w- I was so happy at first that we wouldn't have class for two weeks <laughs> but that was like two weeks and then a month and then another month and then we never returned yeah basically it never like yeah. our work was just from October to March yeah. when it was supposed to be until June yep 
So yeah, for us, we only got the experience like five and a half months of the program. Yeah. And then everything went online. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Exactly. On our end, man, it's not gonna lie. Um, during the first months down, I I became extremely like paranoid. Oh yeah. To the yeah. point Paranoid. where um it kept me up all night. Yeah, especially since I heard the news about Spain being like one of the hardest hit countries in Europe. So mm -hmm. I the, the real test here is um to train your your mental your your brain, uh -huh. if you know what I mean. Um to survive the pandemic uh, in a foreign country mentally without overwhelming yourself, I guess. Yeah, to making a difference. So if you're just tuning in right now, don't worry. You haven't missed out on a lot. Um, making a Difference is a show created to inspire and motivate um, us youth of the day. So again, my name is Erica Misson and I will be your host for the day. Well, actually, I am the host for Making a Difference. All right, so before the break, um, I interviewed five people, five of my friends actually, who are currently in Madrid right now and they got to share their experiences, um, especially being away from their loved ones um, during this pandemic. Um, but don't worry, we're going to have them back on again later on in the show. Right now, I will be interviewing two, um, two of my friends um, and there is actually a reason why I um, have them on a separate segment. So I'd like to call on Art Rojas and Akaiko Rodero. There they are. There's Hello. Akaiko and there's Art. Hey. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Okay. Just staying at home right now. Yeah. Here in Manila. But they, uh, they arrived. When did you guys arrive? So we July arrived on July 18th. Delay, delay. Correct. It's been two months. Almost okay. two months. So, um, Akaiko and Art, they did the same program, um, um, in Spain, and they did one whole year there. So, so now they're back, <laughs> and I just want to talk to you guys about um, uh, your experiences. So, um, how how was your experience, man? First, in in Madrid. You guys were in Madrid also, right? With um, the yes. rest of uh -huh. Both of us were were in Madrid, just like all, all of the mm -hmm. other guys then. Um, so in same story, we well, ako, I teach secondary students in a small town about forty five minutes away from uh, Madrid city center. So I teach first year uh, high school uh, kids until fourth year. I taught history, PE, English. Uh, computer class. Ang weird na mga subjects ko eh, but oh, yeah, that's okay. what I was assigned to. I even taught chemistry. <laughs> Not my best subjects, pero uh, it was quite easy. Um, kasi basically, we would just mainly assist the teachers in making activities, uh, you know, reading textbooks, giving them instructions, mm. and stuff like that. So, ganun lang naman, even though we. Okay, subjects, okay, there. Oh, yeah, I'm back. Okay. Even though we didn't have the the proper knowledge on those subjects, nakaya nam panan naman namin. So it's just basically us um, reiterating everything in English, making sure the students are you know understanding us correctly, even mm -hmm. correcting the the teachers then gonna making sure everything the grammar is right, what they're saying is right, and everything else makes sense. Okay. So yeah. How about you, Akaiko? What um. <clears throat> Grade did you teach, or what age? Oh, I taught second uh, secondary. So secondary and um, that's basically first year college, uh, first year high school, uh, junior and senior high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tapos, um, you know, man, um, I taught only English, no? In yung pinakaiba oh. kay Arturo. Okay. So yeah, I was only assigned to teach English. Then. Tapos, um, what else? Um, yung sa akin naman, it's not merely assisting the teachers eh, kasi inassign talaga nila ako to take over the class for an hour. So talagang, I was like the main teacher, giving the lessons and everything. Tapos, I was also the one preparing the lesson plans for, yun, for the lesson. 
Okay. So, parang so, teacher talaga. I mean, oh, okay. tayong tatlo, we took the same course. Right? Once mm-hmm. to learn the <clears throat> Um, How is it like teaching? I, I mean, we don't really have a background on education. Um, iba yung forte natin. So, what was it like being an actual teacher? Especially for Akaiko. Because Akaiko, you mentioned that they gave you the class. So, you were, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, how was that for you, Akaiko? So, um, actually, easy lang sa akin, to be honest. Kasi, feeling ko lang parang nagre-report ako sa college. Yun lang talaga. Parang, <laughs> parang ka lang nagre-report sa college. Tapos yun. Pero, <laughs> I would ask, I would ask the teacher a day before kung ano yung tinakin nila so that I could prepare something something related dun sa um, lesson na yun. Tapos yun. Yeah. Actually, yun lang talaga. Parang sa college ka lang. Okay. Yeah. Namimiss nyo na ba yung Spain? Yeah, sobra, sobra. Be honest, ako, yeah, we do miss Spain. Ako, may European withdrawal pa rin ako. <laughs> Hinahanap-hanap naman yung... Ah. Ano? Ano yung hinahanap? Hindi <laughs> <laughs> e yung weather. Ngayon kasi, yeah, weather. palamig na ng palamig dun. It's starting to get cold. Mm. Um, ano pa ba? Plus yung lifestyle is very convenient. Yung commute mo dun, it's not hassle at all. Tapos, paglalabas ka, okay. uh, basta iba yung vibe eh. Alam mo dito kasi pag lumabas ka sa bahay mo, iba yung ano eh, di ba? Pag nasa kalye ka, it's, it's different eh. Doon mas malinis, Uh, ano ba? Not no address. Oh, mas, mas maganda lang talaga na kaya yung mga tao, maganda yung surroundings. Yeah. Para siyang um, I can say para siyang Manila pero in a high standard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kasi same personality din ng mga tao. Actually hindi namin na feel talaga mga culture shock talaga. Yun lang para siyang Pilipinas pero in a high standard. Miss namin yung Manila. dadalaw lang kami doon sa community na yun or kakain kami sa Filipino restaurant. So, okay. Ayun, cope naman din. Nakakatulong din. I have a question. This is actually a personal question popped in my head right now. Um, mm-hmm. So you okay. guys um, were teachers. Did you get to also share yung Filipino culture? Like, were you guys given that chance? Oh, Or yes. Something? Yeah? Sa akin, in my yeah. case, oh, kasi... Ang maganda sa school ko na swerte nga ako kasi they gave me the freedom to do what to do yung kung paano ko i-prepare yung lessons tas parang every month meron na akong pinipipare na something <coughs> cultural like for example in December I uh, I showcased the uh, Filipino Christmas culture na gulat nga sila na we start the Christmas on September 1. Yeah. So parang nagulat sila. Background natin. Christmas <laughs> na. Oy, plus ano ah. Ngayon na, ngayon na. Gusto nila si Jose Marichan. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gusto nila si Jose Marichan. Yun <laughs> naman. Hindi naman pala Jose Marichan. Grabe si Jose Marichan. Abot, ano? Abot. Pang international talaga. I know. Okay. Ayan. So, what career do you plan to pursue naman now? Ngayon, I'm applying for... I, I wanna go into embassies, eh. Embassies, ah, consulate. Yeah. I've never really... Um, ventured into that, ano, eh. Even though alam ko consular and diplomatic affairs, eh, hindi ko pa, hindi pa ako naka-venture dun sa path na yun. So, I, this, is, this is the time I wanna try to pursue that. Kung ano, and you know experience how it is to be okay. in, in that uh, venture. Good luck with that art. Um, Thank you so much. Ara, right, okay. How about you, Akaiko? What's your course? Ako naman, ano, um, saan kasi ay- ayoko sana umalis kasi I was having the time of my life there in Madrid talaga. Talagang sobrang saya. But unfortunately, COVID happened. So, yun, nung may, yung PASIC zero pa lang, kasi meron silang ano, um, four phases, parang uh, trans- transition plan to the new normal. So, nung phase zero pa lang, kasi yun yung pinamatagal na stage, eh. parang it took um, three months ata. So, parang dun pa lang, mag-isa lang ako sa flat, uh, mag-iisip pa ako ng mga possibilities, tapos nakabantay ako dun sa parang chart nila nung daily active cases. 
Tapos nakita ko na parang kung itutuloy ko siya medyo risky na there's a chance na makancel yung program. So parang I think it would be best na umuwi na lang ako since pag-uwi ko rin naman dito may business naman kami may hindi naman ako mawawala ng trabaho. So parang sa win-win situation. Pero sayang, sayang kasi ang dami sanang ano eh. Sana mag-ano pa ako eh. Mag-extend pa ako for another year. Kasi yeah. yun. Sayang pa. Okay. So you um, experienced also na uh, being locked down in Spain. Um, mm-hmm. How was that for you guys? Um, I asked these, I asked the, this question to the to the rest of the gang a while ago. How, wh- what was it like for, for you guys? Because as I mentioned, at such a young age, um, you guys were alone. I mean, you yes, you have your routines, you have each other, but um, there, right now, a lot of people would want to be with their family. So, how did you guys cope with that? I think, uh, ano ba? We were ano lang, We had to find ways to cope by uh, keeping ourselves distracted. Sabi nga nila. So I guess we started watching uh, new TV series. Yung mga ganon. Um, ako personally, I learned how to cook a little bit more. Dito na ako explore since I had so much time. Malapit lang yung groceries sa amin, so. Um, I, I I wasn't able to do it as much when we had you know the regular normal days. So I I had a lot of time to myself. I, you know, I started doing all those cooking, um, exercising all that kapag balik sa pag exercise sa bahay. Um, ayun, yun lang basically for the past three months. But once it got better, a little bit better around June. Medyo nakakapaglabas-labas na rin kami. So, so, we found other ways to to somehow keep our mental uh, stabilities a little bit more sane by taking walks. Sometimes we would meet all together kami nila, sila Pao, sila Bianca, sila Jigger. We would take uh, small day trips, uh, nag-hike kami and stuff like that. So, ayun lang. Bas- just ano just staying safe lang overall but yung mga small ways na yon to help you ano um keep stable lang your mental health you know hmm. and i think that helps seeing each other uh, calling each other from time to time uh tremendously helps talaga you know what i i realized talking to you guys um talagang you really well all of you agree on this no you had to really work on your mental health so it, it really affected everyone mentally I, even here no man then i think mm-hmm. that's the main uh, the main issue maybe you guys could um give an advice especially maybe we have viewers who are alone um even here in manila because i know a few who are alone um they are stuck um, and they can't really leave. They can't go back to their families. So maybe you could, I don't know, share their insight, give advice, especially to those who are alone and how they could cope up mentally. Um, what they could do if you have anything to share. Go ahead. Right. Okay. Well, um, for me, uh, the what I what I would give as advice is. Rather than uh, video calling your friends and family, maybe what you can do as an individual is to find your passion. So find what makes you happy. Um, what uh, can you do when you're at home? So, so is it is it cooking? Maybe you can write. You can do writing. You can uh, watch films or something like that, and then uh, be be creative with what uh, with yeah. what uh, with what your passion is, so that you can find that happiness that you had before and uh, yeah rather than going out and uh, risking your health so might as well do something creative at home to uh, find the happiness in that thanks for that yeah yeah um same answer with Jigger, but i think i will phrase it in a way that people should be able to find an out so I know that you know being some people can be frustrated, angry. Now what you can do is 
all those emotions into like let's say meditation, exercise, baking, trying something new, yeah. or watching this whatever works for you. So like um, it's not a one size fit yeah. um, thing. For example, works at watching movie, exercising. For some people, it might not work. So the key is to really try everything and then what works. So that's that's my advice. I mean, you have anything nothing else to say. <laughs> Already have everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks for that, Bia. I, I you know I miss talking to you, Bia. Bia is um one of my well, actually one of my best friends in college. Um, so I haven't seen her since since you left. I think even before yeah. you left. Yeah. So I had two already of you guys on my show. I had Gabby and then I had you. So yeah. Uh, it's been almost a year. Yeah. Oh, oh. Are uh, oh, you? Oh, yeah. So, and thanks to that, Bia. I think um, and- another thing that's important for people to know is that it's okay if you don't develop a routine quickly, right. if you feel like you just want to be lazy all day. Uh-huh. I mean, yes, you girl. it's valid. Because for, for a while, I was really feeling bad because like my roommate in Valencia developed a routine more or less. Um, and I was, just, you know, I would wake up and then I would cook. And then I would just watch TV all day, and I, I would feel bad because it's like, okay, I should be, I should be productive. But then, you know, sometimes it's just one of the of what's going on. And like what Bianca said, it's not like a one size fits all. Everyone yeah. goes through it differently, and That's I think right. they should always validate na, oh, lang na, I'm not doing anything. I don't need to do something to make myself feel worthy <laughs> or yeah. like feel productive or something. I agree. Actually, I agree with you guys. Tama, tama talaga siya, Now we, um, yes, we're all going through the same. Um, we're all going through this pandemic together, but um, we're all different. Then. We, we all um, do things different. So, thanks for the mm-hmm. advice. <laughs> I, I hope. Um, I hope you know, the viewers watching um, take what you guys said into account. It. That's really important, and also. Communicate. Communicate. Communication is key. So, Friendship. So, for mga friends natin and dito. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, that's yeah. it for today's show. Thanks, you guys, again for. Thank you, Erica. Congrats on your show. Wait, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Erica, for having us. Congrats. Yeah, thanks for having us. Take care. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. There you have it. Um, That was today's episode. Again, so. Um, these are my friends who um, are in Spain, who went to Madrid, um, and they shared their insights on what it's like um, living abroad, living away from their families, um, especially now uh, that we're all going through this pandemic. So I think the theme of the day uh, when it comes to the min- millennials um, is adulting. Stay tuned for the next episode only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.